So the first question that I normally ask is if you have a juicer at home. The reason I ask that, most people, they get on a health kick. They go out, they buy a juicer. When they get home with those machines, they use them a few times, they realize how tough they are to clean. The other issue with the juicer, when it comes to your health, they take those fruits and vegetables, they squeeze or extract the juice right out of them. Out the other side of that machine comes 50% of the produce you just paid for, and you throw it in the garbage. It's expensive, but it's also counterproductive because you drink in a lot of sugar, and you leave things out that are healthy for you. Now, these are the big globe grapes. They have the seeds in them. Grape seeds contain an extremely powerful antioxidant. It's actually called proanthos cyanin. You can go to like a GNC or any health food store out there, buy a vial of red grape seed extract. It's usually like $35, $40 for a few servings. Doesn't go very far. Now, rather than going completely organic, I buy my produce here. We wash this stuff real well with the citrus extract like the veggie wash. If you clean this stuff right, you can use everything. Like strawberries, they're really high in allergic acid. It's a great cancer fighter. But those stems contain chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a natural enzyme that boosts and supports your immune system. Most people take home a pineapple, they cut it up, decor it, throw the centers in the garbage because they're so tough to chew. The core of that pineapple is where all the fiber is. Lack of fiber is directly linked to 18 diseases in the American diet. Things like diverticulitis and colon cancer. Anytime you use a melon, especially if it's a cantaloupe, leave the seeds on them. There's just over 150 nutrients inside of every cantaloupe seed. They're real high in fiber. When you break them down, there's actually a lot of protein in there as well, like flaxseed. Flaxseed's high in omega-3s and 6s. It's great brain food. Now, they're getting pretty hard to find, but when summer comes around, get yourself the seeded watermelons. If you were to weigh them up ounce per ounce, there's actually more protein ounce per ounce in big black watermelon seeds than there is in chicken, fish, or beef. So especially if you're a vegetarian, it's a great source of nutrition for your bodies. Now, a woman, as they get older or once they've had children, starts to process and use up calcium and potassium, almost two times faster than a man. That's one of the leading reasons women are so much more prone to things like osteoporosis, and why they get it earlier on in their lives than men. Now at home, I'd actually freeze the bananas, just like this, or use like some frozen berries to make that juice cold. Here for my demonstrations, I use ice. Because if you've ever burned up or struggled with an inexpensive machine, it was probably because of heavy, solid stuff like ice and frozen fruits. Your typical $50 blender has a little motor about the size of your pinky. When you put that heavy stuff in, you can smell the motor burning. You'll notice there's chunks left in that juice when you're done. Now I do that here to make them cold, but to also show you something. Would you ever start any machine full of that many ingredients without the lid on it? Probably not, right? Most machines have a cross pattern blade system. They work like a fan or a propeller. They shoot things up. If they're real expensive, lots of models have like tools that help to push back into the blade. An inexpensive machine tends to chase things in circles and they don't blend the same. These jars are very unique. You'll see them at coffee shops and smoothie bars on our machines. They're square with a single wingtip blade. Rather than blasting up, they create a vortex or a funnel and they pull the product down onto that blade for you. You'll notice on the front, there's no switches and knobs to run them. All those keys link to computer-generated programs the machines are designed to run automatically for you. That way, the employee at a smoothie bar can push a button and walk away. As they're helping customers and they stay productive, the machine makes the recipe for them. So if you'll help us out, go ahead. We'll actually hit the whole juice button here on the front of the machine. Now, right off the bat, with that lid off, you'll notice it starts at a fairly slow speed. It pulls the material into those blades. You'll see that funnel develop in the center. There's actually 10 speeds to that machine, but they're self-regulated within those cycles. At the high speed, these peak out at three horsepower. They run up to 28,000 RPM. Those blades reach speeds just under 300 miles an hour on the inside of that jar. Now at that speed, you create a lot of friction. The friction produces heat, like if you rub your hands together. You can actually take raw vegetables like this in a minute and a half, you can cook a piping hot soup. But we don't want to cook a juice, right? If you have a manually operated machine with that much power, it's easy to overdo things. Those run their own program, and they shut off when they're done. Now that process is called micronization. The machine breaks down the cell walls of a whole fruit or vegetable, all the skins, seeds, and stems, all that stuff, much healthier than running things through a juicer. Now the worst part about any appliance at home is typically the cleanup. If they're tough to clean, you're probably not using it. These are actually self-cleaning. You just put in a little bit of water to cover the top of that blade and a drop 
of dish soap. They're also dishwasher safe. If you do something real sticky like a homemade peanut butter or if you leave the container on the counter overnight, you can throw them right in the dishwasher. Now this pulse key, it's a burst of energy. You can use it as a food processor, chop salsas and peanuts. If you're going to clean that machine, hold that key down for five seconds. That burst of energy sanitizes the blade, lid and jar all at once. When you're finished, you just dump them out and give them a rinse. They were actually designed that way with the restaurant owner in mind so they could go right from doing something real sticky like a beet juice straight into an ice cream. They never transfer colors, odors, or tastes from one recipe to the next. Very simple. Now this is actually one of the first few years that we've sold these commercial grade machines for your homes. So they come with the books. They're on every corner of the booth. If you guys would like to look, go to page 168 in that book. That's actually the ingredients for this tortilla soup. The only thing I change, I leave out chicken bouillon. There's a lot of MSG and preservatives in that stuff. It's not good for you anyway. We use a little piece of an avocado instead. Now they call for hot water. My heater here is probably a little hotter than your kitchen sink, so we're going to cool it down just a bit. But if you combine hot water and cold vegetables, I'll show you. You can actually feel the temperature of that container. Now one thing you'll notice, there's actually no steam coming off there at this point. It's just kind of lukewarm. These machines, they're only 15 and a quarter inches tall. That's important because if you were to measure those upper cabinets in your kitchen, they're most likely 18 inches above those countertops. Appliances that are too big and they don't fit, people tend to put them away and they don't get used. Now this program is soups, syrups, and fondues. It's a minute and a half long. It'll take cold stuff and warm it up, or it'll take warm stuff like that, make it extremely hot. Now if you guys have ever used a juicer before, you'll know it'll take literally a wheelbarrow full of fruit to get that much juice out of it. And when you're done, you throw all that roughage in the garbage. When you're juicing this way, it's a lot healthier for you. They fill you up. And they're very inexpensive to make. You can go to like a smoothie bar or a co-op. They make you these. They put in things like wheatgrass and bee pollen, all that stuff. They're like $6. If you look behind the counter, odds are you're going to see one of those containers on a Blendtec machine. You'll notice on the front there's an LCD screen. It always lets you know what program you're running and how much time is left in that cycle. So if you're tending to a child or making other things in the home, you always know exactly what's happening with that machine. And you can actually feel that container now. The longer that cycle runs, the hotter and hotter that soup gets. So that's a minute and a half, and your soups are now piping hot. Now at home, I'd throw in like pre-cooked chicken, black beans, rice, corn, whatever leftovers you have in the fridge from last night's dinner. We'll use a handful of the organic tortilla chips here. The pulse key on the front of the machine actually chops everything up inside for you. So it's under two minutes from beginning to end. You've got a healthy soup. It's not packed full of salt preservatives, all that garbage that comes out of a can. Now what's important, if you ran that cycle twice, you'd actually start to boil the ingredients in the jar. If you boil vegetables, you cook enzymes and nutrients out of them. This is nice and hot, but it's still a raw food at that temperature. These are a smart machine, they'll shut off before you overdo things. So we made you breakfast, cooked you a hot dinner, we'll do an ice cream real quick, show you. All that goes into that soup, it's two Roma tomatoes, a carrot, piece of an onion, a little chunk of cheddar cheese, a sliver of jalapeno. There's some MSG-free taco seasoning and garlic salt, avocados, chips, water, and a little stem of cilantro. You can actually make a half gallon of that soup for about the same cost as buying a can of it off the shelf at a grocery store. Much better for your families than anything that's ever going to come out of a can. Now for our ice cream, we want to make it healthy. We're actually going to start with a homemade almond milk. The books walk you through and show you how to do all this. Almond milk's great if there's anybody in the home that is lactose intolerant. You can make this stuff for your families. Almond milk's also extremely high in monosaturated fats. They're a heart healthy fat and they're a great cancer fighter. Now to sweeten the ice cream up, we're going to use just a little bit of agave. This is a low glycemic index, all natural sweetener. It's derived from the same plant that they make tequila from, but this is safe for your little kids. And then to thicken it up, there's lots of recipes in the book. Lots of different ideas to thicken things up like sugars or peanut butter. I like to do a healthy ice cream. We're going to do vanilla whey protein powder. You can get all this stuff here at the warehouse, by the way. 
Now the Breeze and parents love the machines. If there's picky eaters at home, like dad or the kids, ice cream's probably the best opportunity you have to get them to eat their vegetables. If they're real picky, start out with cabbage. It'll turn out white. Tell them it's vanilla. They don't need to know what's in there. We'll go right into the green stuff here. We'll do a spinach ice cream. Now I like to get a base out of this one first. We'll go to speed three or four, get a nice little base, and then we'll pack the ice in and run the ice cream cycle. Once you have that base, any key on the bottom row shuts that machine down. We're going to pack in about three cups of ice. You could use frozen fruits, berries, bananas, whatever you want to in this as well. And then this program is Ice Cream's Frozen Yogurts. It's a 45 second cycle. It uses the low speeds of the motor, like the torque in a truck, to break all that stuff down without heating it up like it did to the soup. All right, so that was 45 seconds. You've got a nice ice cream. Now there's one more thing we're gonna show you real quick while we actually dish up your dessert here. It's actually my favorite part about this machine. It's the same blade and jar for everything that you do. You don't have to buy extra parts or attachments. This is actually rice and a rice flour. You could do like unpopped kernels of corn into cornmeal, whole wheat berries, or even grind your own coffee. The books will show you step by step. As soon as you're done grinding, you can go right into an iced frappuccino or a loaf of bread in that same container. Now for these hard dry grains, we just go to the high speed using the manual keys. That's going to be speed 10. So we'll go ahead and lay that out on a paper towel. You guys are welcome to feel it and run your hands through it. We don't serve this. It's actually nice and warm. That warmth helps the yeast and the ingredients in a bread dough to rise. The book will show you how to do a one pound loaf of bread in that container in five minutes. You'll throw all your ingredients into your jar. It'll actually have you use the pulse key on the front of your machine and you'll knead your dough into a ball in the jar right on top of that blade and save from the cleanup in your kitchens. So here at the warehouse you expect a couple of things. You guys are paying for an annual membership because you want the best price. These machines aren't cheap, but they are less expensive here than anywhere else that you go. This is a 30-year-old American-made company out of Orem, Utah. If you went right to the factory, right now on the website these machines are $435 plus the shipping to get them home. They're obviously a lot less here at 380, uh, but we have a seven-year unconditional guarantee that covers this machine from head to toe. No matter what happens for seven years in that entire machine, it's covered. So we do have all three of the colors displayed up front. There's red, white, and black. If you guys have a specific color in mind or any questions, just ask. We'll help you out. The boxes all look the same. So this should be the best spinach ice cream you've ever had.